Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Brown Bag. Tonight, we are continuing our series on the Certified Kubernetes Administrator exam um, with cluster installation as our topic with Nathan Bennett. Uh, this is something that we've been setting up for a little while. It's the roots of the Brown Bag. We did a lot of series on various IT certifications throughout the years. We took a step back and did just some like career growth stuff, but now figured why not get back to it. Um, this is where we are in the series currently. We are on episode two of nine. Last week was a cluster architecture session. If you missed that one, check it out on our YouTube channel, vbrownbag.com. I'm sorry, youtube.com slash vbrownbag. Uh, but we do have a website called vbrownbag.com. That's where you can sign up for the session. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube, head over to our website, uh, click the link that says podcast, and you will get the option to sign up for one of our many podcasts. Um, and also, you know, Make sure that you interact with us. So if you're watching this live tonight, uh, please feel free to ask questions throughout. You can use the Q&A or the chat in Zoom. I prefer the Q&A. If you want to annoy me, use the chat. Either way, it's all good. Uh, or you can tweet to us using the hashtag VBrownBag. Uh, either way, we will get your questions to our wonderful presenter tonight, the one, the only, Nathan Bennett. Welcome, Nathan. Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, my pleasure. Uh, I'm your host, Ken Nalbone, folks, but I'm going to shut up in a moment here because I'm not the star of tonight's show. That would be Nathan. Uh, and I'm going to hand it over to you now. So let me hit stop share and you go ahead and share your screen, Nathan. All right, cool. So I'll go ahead and bring up my uh, desktop here. Share. There we go. Is everyone able to see my desktop or my presentation, I should say? I see it. Okay, cool. As long as I've got some verbal agreement to what they are seeing, that is all that matters to me. So yeah, I, I don't think there's anything else to say on this. We're going to go over the cluster installation that is covered in the CKA. Um, we're going to just take a, just a little bit about what is really required about this. And we're going to take a look directly into how, uh, excuse me, the tools that we're going to be utilizing, how we're going to do it, and then we're going to do it. Um, and that's really the area that's gotten me the most nervous I've ever been because uh, we're actually going to go through the steps and I'm going to do it as a fresh installation. So there's nothing, nothing opinionated, nothing stating that it's actually going to work. In fact, I'm kind of hoping that certain things don't work because if that actually happens, then we can kind of talk about why it didn't work uh, a little bit around uh, the stuff that you can do in order to kind of see uh, the why fours and whatnots and work around those things. So we'll see how it goes. But a little bit about uh, who am I? Um, I'm looking very, very intently at a screen, but you know, I got a bunch of certifications, uh, doesn't matter. I'm, I'm a cloud architect at Sterling Computers. I do have my CKA. I got it about last year. Um, and really this perspective that I'm going to present is kind of exactly how I prepared for the CKA and a little bit more in depth of like my experience. So if you if you came to this kind of like for an understanding of more about Kubernetes, I think a lot of other people did like a way better job about this. This is very laser focused on getting you past this part of the exam. Um, and I, I kind of want to make that a little bit clear here because uh, if you're if you're here not looking at the CKA, I mean like you're going to learn how to do some stuff that's some really awesome cool stuff, um, but that's kind of the the point that that I'm taking and how I've prepared and the demonstration that we're going to do. The other stuff that I've uh, kind of been known for is community stuff. I'm, I'm a big believer in the V community, uh, as well as many other communities out there, including the CNCF community and the groups out there. Um, I'm a co-host for the IT Reality US podcast. If anyone's ever heard of that, um, Vince Wood is the uh, host. I'm just the co-host. I, I add banter and try to make people laugh as much as possible and basically be, be a joker most of the time. I'm on uh, Twitter at vnathanbennett. I am uh, you know, obviously open to new connections. If you have any questions about things that we're gonna talk about tonight or things that uh, may help you, you know, in your career or Kubernetes or whatever, you know, hit me up and let me know. Always uh, all about trying to help someone move forward in their career or things along those names. And then I blog sometimes at nerdynight.life. 
Um, I've become a blogger for my my company, uh, Sterling Computers. So nerding ain't not that life has has not seen a lot of love lately. Um, I, but I do blog about um, CKA, and I do have a blog specifically around the steps that we're going to go through tonight that may help kind of give a little bit more color to um, the documentation that we're going to follow. So for tonight, we're going to be using kubeadm to do an installation of a Kubernetes cluster. That is specifically what the CKA is going to ask you to do. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit around kind of like what is bootstrapping, what is kubeadm, how are we going to do these things in a bit of a slide deck. Uh, then we're going to jump into the demonstration. And this is going to be kind of a, a very video heavy focused uh, uh, demonstration here because we're going to actually go through the steps necessary. And if I kind of rattle off what those steps are necessary for, might not actually be all that fun to listen to, but you know, as we wait for things to download or or steps that we're doing, you know, we'll try to figure out some way to uh, discuss different things. Maybe Ted Lasso. We'll see. After the demonstration's done, we're going to talk real briefly on. Okay, so this was cool, but say I have a Kubernetes cluster. What do I do with it? Uh, or what should I do with it in terms of preparing more for the CKA? Or maybe I already passed the CKA. What do I do with it then? Um, and then I'm going to have one quick slide about uh, my personal test tips. I'm sure everyone's going to bring uh, an idea of test tips. I think there's going to be an episode really focused on that. But um, I think everyone's going to bring different test tips to the table that really help people understand all the different uh, versatile, versatile tools they can have to pass the CKA. So let's just jump into it. Um, this is a slide. I think David did a great job of talking about the, the different parts of the architecture uh, last week. Um, if you want to learn more about all the different, uh, you know, parts of Kubernetes in general and the architecture, uh, cannot uh, say just how amazing of a job he did. Um, in fact, uh, I really focus on the etcd stuff that he does, uh, the backup and restore. I remember that being a pretty big deal, hint, hint. Uh, question for the, the CKA when I took it. Uh, but today, we're just going to look at the installation. So when we talk about bootstrappers, I, I think of bootstrappers in terms of two different fields. Uh, one's development and one's production or prod. Um, the development area is very much focused on your local laptop or your local machine. That's where Kind, Minikube, and Docker really live now. Now, or Docker Desktop is I should be more specific. Now, these can be deployed in other places, obviously, but where they're really extremely versatile and helpful is on your local laptop. Um, I've used Kind multiple times uh, just to deploy with uh, VirtualBox and play around with uh, the Kubernetes instances that I've deployed, some application development, maybe play around with some security, what have you. Um, Minikube and Docker Desktop is, uh, I think both of those are, are single nodes instances. So you can't really play around with a full cluster. Um, that's what where Kind steps in and Minikube and Docker don't really uh, step in that well. But they have their place. Minikube and Docker definitely allow you for application development and, and software engineering. Um, and you can really learn those types of skills with those uh, platforms. Now the production realm, we have, uh, in my, my opinion, these, these are the main players that technically, I would say, are not in the, in the uh, public cloud. Um, they could be, if you really wanted it to be. Um, and what I mean by that is Kubeadm, Rancher, OpenShift, and Tatsu can all be deployed privately on your local data center. Whereas if you were going to the public cloud, sure, you could use those things. But they have, you know, uh, they already have pre-built services such as AKS, GKE, um, EK, uh, AKS, EKS. Uh, there's many different letters out there that you can utilize within the public cloud for, for these solutions. Um, Kubeadm is what we're going to be focusing on tonight, uh, as it is the uh, CNCF uh, project for that bootstrapping solution. So what is Kubeadm? Um, this is just a screenshot I pulled directly from Kubernetes.io docs. And I love that how they just very matter of factly say, you know, it performs the actions necessary to get a minimum viable cluster up and running. 
you know, that's that's all it really does. I mean, you do a lot of steps moving up to the uh, the final kubeadm command to actually kick off uh, the cluster installation. And if you bring up all of the dominoes correctly, when you run your kubeadm command or kubeadm, whichever way you want to call it, those things just kick off and everything just falls where it should. Um, and then you can continue on. Now, kubeadm is not the end all be all part of this. It's, it's a huge function that you need to learn how to utilize within CKA. But when we go into the demonstration, I'm going to get you to the point where um, you can actually see uh, that, that your cluster is running correctly. At least I, ho I hope so. Uh, the goal there is, since this is a practical exam, you actually have the ability to test whether or not you have actually done uh, the objective of the question. Um, you know, when I've, I've taken a lot of exams, most of them, you know, are multiple choice or true false or, you know, drag a, a box over or whatever, right? You can't really tell unless, you know, from your knowledge, whether or not it's actually functioning correctly or not. When a practical exam, you can. Um, what I mean by that is, if you know what a working cluster is and needs in order to be defined as a working cluster, you know how to get there and you know how to test it to verify that, yes, I did that question correctly and it is working. This is kind of something that, that I did um, when I did the CKA was every time I had a question, I performed the task, but then I ran tests to verify that the task actually took, that everything is actually running the way that it should be. And then I moved on to the next question. And we're going to try to get to that in the demonstration. So again, you know, multiple ways to create a, a, a cluster. We're going to do CK, uh, the kubeadm. Um, and when we're doing the kubeadm, what I'm going to try to uh, impersonate a little bit is a CKA environment. CKA is an open book test. If you go to uh, kubernetes.io slash docs, you can use anything within that area. Um, so with that setup and that documentation, there are multiple ways that you can actually prepare. Um, if you have a license for VMware Workstation or Fusion, you know you can use a Ubuntu image or uh, CentOS or what have you in order to utilize kubeadm and you know build through that. Same thing with if you have a uh, VMware vSphere, um, it, uh, uh, local data center or home lab in order to, you know, build your clusters as well. You can do that. Tonight, I'm actually using Raspberry Pis because I, I just believe that those are extremely easy solutions uh, and little devices that you can just grab and within like a relatively cheap, you know, footprint. And then you can use them for, I don't know, multiple different things. I have one that I, that I take with me with my iPad Pro that runs uh, Visual Studio Code, and it holds all of my software engineering uh, Go code that I use. Um, it's actually a really interesting way of utilizing it, but it just goes to talk about all the different things that you can do. The other reason why I like doing them uh, is just because, you know, using Raspberry Pis, um, you know, you have the ability to uh, build and then rebuild over and over and over again. Um, so, you know, you can flash new SD cards with the same image and then have multiple different SD cards, go through the steps, verify you've gotten to where you need to get to, pull the SD card out, put in new fresh ones, get the IPs from DHCP or set an IP on it, and then run through the steps again. And that's literally what I did for my, for my CKA. So I just continually did the steps so I knew exactly what to expect. With that in mind, I also wrote a blog about uh, learning K8s on kubeadm on nerdynate.life. Um, I'm still, you know, as it's been uh, a year, you know, I'm still looking back and making sure that I keep it updated. Um, and uh, so I'm continually editing it. I'm actually using two Pi 4s, if you're wondering about the actual configuration. Um, and I believe the ones that I'm using are uh, two gigabit models in terms of memory, um, but you wouldn't want anything you know smaller than that. So the first rule of every practical exam that I've taken is you know keep calm, 
and move on. Um, main reason why I bring this up is because the biggest problem in, in most of the CKA is really yourself. Um, it's your nerves, it's your energy level, it's you know all of the different things that may make you forget what you already know or make you bypass things that you know you should have an understanding of, right? And so maintaining a sense of calm and just making sure that you're able to work through in your head what actually is going on and what, what may be happening can definitely help you in the exam. All right, with that being said, we're going to dive into it, but just a quick disclaimer. Um, you know, I'm not a Linux guy. I, uh, I, I focused on the CKA a lot and I tried to make sure that I knew, you know, um, everything that could happen. But when you're doing these things, uh, a lot of times things can go wrong and for really weird reasons. So, you know, we'll see where this goes. Hopefully, like I said, there may be some errors or something. Uh, there may not. We'll see what happens. So let me exit out of that. And we're going to get into basically what I have here, which is uh, just a regular website that's going to Kubernetes.io docs. This is one of the websites that you can use during the CKA. And I have two different Raspberry Pis connected via SSH. I'll just make sure that my terminals are still live. Good deal. So both of these boxes, uh, these Raspberry Pis, excuse me, are fresh installs of Ubuntu 20. So the first thing I'm going to do is just some Raspberry Pi configurations, including setting the host. So we're going to name host game control, set host name. Let's see which one's which here. So I'm going to name this one control. And we're just going to change the host file. I'm going to do the same thing over here on this other machine. I'm just going to name it worker. We're going to change our host file for this one as well. And now we're going to do a couple of uh, changes that are specific to Raspberry Pis. Um, specific to the C groups. Now you shouldn't have to do this if you're doing something in um, a vSphere environment or if you're running something with a, a full image, um, you shouldn't have to do this. But these are things that are available within that blog and within my Nerdy Nate blog. Um, so you can find these steps there. Um, and I'll make sure um, that I can get where all these steps are commandlets that I'm running here over to Ken so he can get those posted as well. Yeah, and if you have any so watching this on YouTube, sorry to interrupt, uh, we are going to put yeah. like resource links in the YouTube description. So folks, if you're looking for this stuff, check the description below in the YouTube video and you'll find it there. Awesome. So the last step I'm going to, going to do here and I'm going to do a reboot. Now, this is really freaky when you do a reboot in the CKA. <clears throat> It says in the exam tips that you can absolutely do a reboot in the CKA. It may take a while to come up. Um, I'm saying this from firsthand experience because it literally scared the living bejeebers out of me when my machine took a very long time for it to come back up and running. Uh, but sometimes, you know, a reboot is what you need in order to, you know, get things running. And you know, having that ability and that agility within the CKA is very, very helpful. So let me get back into these machines. And we're just going to clear these up. OK, and so here we are now. We have our control box, and now we have a worker box. The names have been set. The C groups have been changed. So basically, at this point, we are simulating server-grade machines. And here is basically the starting point of the CKA. So I've had my Kubernetes IO docs. I've got my two machines. And I know I want to do kubeadm, so I'm going to search kubeadm. And in my search results, I see creating a cluster with kubeadm. So I'm going to click this. 
And if you're thinking, oh, you can't do that in a test, you absolutely can do this in the test. I know this by experience because I did this in a test. Um, now that I'm back in uh, KubeADM, remember I'm still in Kubernetes.io docs, which is a okay area for us to be in. I can go to installing KubeADM. Now, if we look at the installing KubeADM tab on the Kubernetes.io slash docs website, we can see the beginning configurations for um, our cluster, and we can actually just start running those. So we're going to create a couple of files. And these are actual um, files that we're going to enable with our system control dash dash system command. Now, when you run this command, um, a little trick here is to make sure that the configuration changes that you did for, uh, in this instance, uh, bridge.bridge .bridge or net.bridge.bridge, .bridge .bridge, that's all I really look for. And so if you're looking here and you don't see it, you might want to wait a second um, and then try it again and then see if it comes up. What you really want to make sure that you see is this right here, where it shows that the file is being seen. It knows that the file is there, just the configurations are not being picked up. We can see this on the worker here. So if we try this again, we can see that that's still not working. One thing I'm going to try is this mod probe VR filter, because that's one of the things that we are, are setting. I'm going to run that. I'm going to try that this uh, system uh, syscontrol dash system, and after I've run that that pseudo command that's right up here within the same document, um, I now see that those configurations are being seen. So I'm going to do the same thing over here on the worker, and those configurations are now being seen. Great. So we've we've done this step. So let's scroll down. Next step is installing runtime. So. In David's talk last week, he talked about the three main runtimes, Docker, Containerd, and Cryo. You could build these things however you want. I have, in my CKA, they did not di dictate what um, runtime they wanted me to deploy. Um, so in my opinion, you have this ability to just click here and see the setup for each one of the runtimes, uh, Containerd, Cryo, and Docker. Uh, when I took it, it was basically everyone was doing Docker. No one ever thought that Docker would even have kind of a need to redo anything. So everyone just did Docker. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to install Docker. So sudo apt install docker.io dash yes. And we'll kick that off. io slash yes. And we'll kick this off. Here we go. And if we scroll down, we'll see a couple of configurations that we'll need to make with Docker and then some system control um, configurations just to make sure that Docker is running properly. All right, so the progress is going to continue on. This is really where we need to just kind of sit back, take a breath. Um, some people would say in the CKA, you can jump from one, one question to the other. Um, I'm not that person. I, I definitely did not um, do that. And I would probably lose track where I was. So I, I, I'm one of those people that would say, do, do not do that. <laughs> focus, focus on what you are, you are doing and just stay on target with this particular area. Yes, it, it may save you seconds of time, but it will not save you a lot of time. That was actually going to be my question, Nathan. Like, uh, for folks who are time conscious, like with your method, just doing everything serially, not trying to jump back and forth to save time. Did you get close to running out of time or did you still have plenty of time to finish the exam just by taking one thing at a time? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, because since it is open book, um, time is your enemy. Um, and when I took the exam both times, I had uh, a little bit over half an hour left. Um, and when I had that much time left, what I basically did was bounce between questions, verify that my answers were there. And there were definitely questions that I was not prepared for, or I didn't know where to start on. And those were the questions that, you know, 
um, I went back to, and then I used the cheat sheet for. Um, and with that, you can go over here and I'll, I'll bounce over here real quick. And I'll just type in cheat, which sounds hilarious on an exam to type the word cheat into a search bar, but you have the cube control or cube CTL or cube cuddle cheat sheet, right? And this has a ton of stuff in it. Uh, for instance, you have a question on exporting via JSON. You know, here's some JSON stuff. It's not gonna give you the full answer, but it'll get you a start. And so when I did the exam, doing these things serially, having, you know, 30 minutes or more left over after I'd answered, you know, the majority of the questions, you know, I, I went back and I just played around with the questions that I, that I were kind of, was kind of loose on the answers to see how to answer them better or make sure that I had to answer them to the best of my ability. When I took the CKA, there was literally somebody there. Um, and they actually told me, because I ended my exam 10 minutes early, that I should <laughs> that I should use those 10 minutes to verify my answers. And I was like, I have been spending the past 20 to 30 minutes verifying my answers. So no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Um, and so in terms of time, you, you should be fine doing things serially. And that's interesting that somebody was telling you, hey, go back and review your answers. Was this like at a normal testing center or was it somehow different? Yeah, so this was in the middle of COVID. So this was at my home. Well, there you go. So, yeah, I just, I, it was just someone that was, we were, um, I, I hit end and then it was like a chat and the chat popped up and said, you still have 15 minutes. Are you sure you want to quit? And I was like, uh, let me look at one more thing. Looked a couple more things, went back, clicked in. It's like, you still have 10 minutes. Are you sure you want to quit? And it wasn't one of those like paperclip, Microsoft, you know, word print, whatever guy popping up. It was literally somebody saying that because, you know, when I said, yeah, I think I'm good and responded to it, then it was like, okay, just, just letting you know that, you know, all this other information, <laughs> which was kind of hilarious. Wow. Cool. Yeah. 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 Okay. So now that Docker is installed, we're going to go through these steps and I'm pretty sure Etsy Docker is already going to be there. Yep. Um, and so we're just going to create this file and then run some system control commands. And these are just uh, C group driver configurations. And by the way, Nathan, we do have an audience question. Uh, Tyler's wondering, did you take the three hour version of the exam from last year or the current exam that's two hours long? Yeah, that's a great question. I took the three hour exam from last year. I actually took it a week before it changed which we're going to talk about in the, in just a second. <laughs> because we're running into almost the exact same thing that I ran into uh, when I took the three hour one. Okay, so um, now we've got Docker where it needs to be. Uh, the next part is we're just going to go back to our kubeadm installing kubeadm and we're going to do the installation for actual kubelet kubeadm cube controller cube cuddle whatever it happened i'm not going to do uh, an update um i've already ran that and i trust that it's going to be there besides i'm going to have to do another update here anyway um, and so that's just kind of like that's just a me thing. I don't really see why I want to do that twice. That just seems like wasting time. All right, so now we're going to do some curl commands to pull a specific key and then point our um, repository for our packages. And then we're going to run an update to update that package. Update, let's see. If that comes in, now this could fail. Um, I've had this happen many times. I, man, this is actually working out great. Um, but I've had this happen many times where we'll come up with an IP address saying it can't hit it. If you see that during the exam, that's one of the major like calm down, just, you know, moments because nine times out of 10, you just need to rerun these two commands and it'll find itself, it'll update and it'll keep moving forward, right? The whole point behind this is not to, you know, really 
make you guys understand. Um, oh, maybe control C on that. I mean, the whole point behind this is, you know, really just getting through these particular um, setups, right? Uh, because if you know how to get around Kubernetes docs and you've done this, um, you know, David said it last week, practice, practice, practice. That is the name of the game for this particular exam. You know, it looks, I, I'm slowing myself down a lot <laughs> for, for this right now um, because, you know, I'm talking through it. I'm making sure, you know, I talk about, you know, a little bit in terms of flavor of, of what these things are doing. But in reality, if you're just, you can just copy and paste and you're at the, the mercy of the, you know, the speed of, you know, the, the um, environment that you're with. And the environment that I was with, I never really had any problems with it, except for one thing, which we're about to get to. Um, so now I have installed kubeidm, I've installed kubectl, I've, I've installed the kubelet. All the pieces are in place for kubeidm to actually bootstrap the cluster, right? From here on, all of their commands are only going to be done on the control plane itself. Um, oh, actually, Hold on one second. I forgot one thing. You're actually going to run these on on all on everything. I forgot. I I missed this one thing, uh, which is just putting kubelet, kubeidm, and kube control on hold. Um, so if you run a apt update, you know it's not going to update those things. You want kubeidm or kubeatom to manage the up, upgrades and things like that because you don't. If they do it outside of that, you could have a bad day. Okay. Anyway. Now, <laughs> everything you're going to do is on the control plane only, um, which is going to be uh, focused around cube, at, cube ADM. This has changed. Um, so in my time, we ran cube ADM in it, and that was it. And everything was working happy. And you know that can work for you to a point. But if you do this on the CKA, I doubt it will pass. Um, now it actually requires you to set a network cider. If you can type cider. Now the pod network cider is specific to the container network interface that you're going to deploy after you deploy it. Um, I have played around with this a lot up to this um, to try to find out if there is a way around this to make it more generic. The only way that I found uh, around having to do a pod network cider is to do a past version of the kubelet, kubeadm, and kubectl. The current version is 1.22. If you do 1.18.17 or 1.19, um, it will actually uh, go past this. Uh, but with 1.22, and it may have something to do with uh, PSPs, I'm not 100% sure. I've just done a little bit of digging in order to find out how to make this actually work. Um, it can actually get you into some, some trouble. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dictate a specific pod network cider, which is going to be 10.244.0.0 slash 16. Some people would think of that as just the basic normal network cider. And I'm going to utilize flannel as my CNI. If you're using a different CNI, Pay attention to what the default pod network cider is. A lot of times they'll say that it will pull up other pod network ciders, but it actually won't. This is where doing this type of practice is extremely valuable in the CKA because it'll teach you these types of things. So let's see how well I did. <laughs> Everybody cross your fingers, cross your toes, because this, this is where all the dominoes fall. And We'll see if they fall in the nicest possible way. All right, I bet everything crossed. <laughs> Appreciate now, that. While we're waiting, do we need to talk about Ted Lasso or something? Oh my goodness. That, that final episode when the guy was talking and then the other guy, and then the thing happened, I cried, man. I, oh man, I, I can't I wait to see it. Uh, it was. I'm behind. It, I have several episodes. To it watch. broke me. It broke me. You know, season one was just the happy, the happiness of it. You know, was where it needed to be, and it just brought me to you know a, a nice place. But you know, just in my life, 
Um, but this new one, the season two, I mean, it's not darker. It's just more, it's more human, I guess. I guess uh, Ted Lasso isn't just a happiness machine. I guess not. Hey, something's happening now. Is it good? So this is all good stuff. Um, we definitely want to see creating static pod manifest for cube API server. Um, these are the uh, key manifests that are actually running um, the individual parts of the architecture of Kubernetes. David talked a lot about the cube API server, controller manager, and scheduler last week. Uh, definitely listen to him um, about those things. Also, you see admin.conf uh, cube config file uh, and a bunch of other cube config files coming up. These are key, key files. Um, because if something does not work in the kubelet or in another place, you would want to look into those areas in order to find them. Okay. Holy cow. I think, I think it worked. <laughs> um, so you have a couple of things here that they're just going to straight off the bat tell you. Uh, the first one is here uh, to create your config file for the user that you've logged in. If you're using your root user, you would use this right here. Since I'm not using um, sudo, I'm just going to copy and paste this, hit enter. Just to verify that it works, I'm just going to run an a cube CTL get pods. It should say, I don't have any. Fantastic. That tells me that my uh, cube control or cube cuddle command hit the API server and then query the scheduler or all the different components to see if there were any pods running. Nothing was running and the default namespace, which there shouldn't be, and then came back and said, yep, we're good. And that tells me that my connection to the controller is good. Now I'm going to take this token, this command right here, and I'm going to go over to my worker that we haven't run any kubeadm commands on. I'm just going to paste it. Now, this is just a weird thing that my computer does. Um, if your computer does not do this, congratulations, your computer is cool. Um, but if you have a Mac, you may see this guy, this one little period right here. Take that out. Uh, and I'm going to hit enter and it's going to tell me I'm not privileged. Um, but for some reason, it adds that one uh, part when I do my control paste. And then if you remove that one period, add sudo and then run it. It's going to start the kubelet on the worker and then call back to the controller. There you go. So we've got a certificate certificate signing and the worker should be now part of the controller. And let's run some, let's cuddle some cubes and see what we got. Okay, great. You will not pass the CKA question with this. <laughs> if you think you're done, you're not. Um, and the reason why is this not ready. Um, when I took the CKA back, back in the olden days, um, it was, remember I said it was right when they were about to change all the certifications. When I got to this point, um, they had told me in my training, oh yeah, just go find your CNI and copy paste. Well, if I do uh, CNI, uh, excuse me, CNI, um, actually, I don't think, I think it's now network plugin add-ons. Maybe it's installing add-ons. There it is. Yep. Network and network policy add-ons. Um, this is the, this is the actual web page that I went to. And as you can see, there's nothing here to tell me how to actually install a CNI. Um, and I could click these, but they all go to specific websites that I should not go to, right? So I was in this weird conundrum where I couldn't actually finish the cluster, but I couldn't go anywhere in order to figure out how to finish the cluster. So this, my point here, and it's to everyone listening, is to have a CNI in your back pocket. On my second attempt, um, I raised a lot of fuss on, on Twitter, on the forums, and on a support ticket. They had actually added the commandlet to add Calico as a CNI to their cluster. I don't know if that will still be there. Um, which is why I say have a CNI in your back pocket. Calico for me was the easiest to remember. Um, and I think it's canal. 
Uh, I don't think that's it. Um, but a real easy one is flannel um, because it here's your here's your command line to run, and you just have to remember really more than anything else this this uh, the website itself. That's that's the real key part. Um, if you can remember raw GitHub user content dot com slash core os slash flannel slash master slash documentation slash cube dash flannel dot yml then you know and be able to type that out you'll know it i actually had to remember something similar to that it was a little bit shorter calico's uh gone through a big revamp though so it's much different so you need to install a cni and i'm going to run this and we're going to pray that this works <sighs> Okay. All right. And this is where I was talking about pod security policies because it's deprecated in version 1.21. Um, if you run the install for uh, cube control, uh, it's going to be cube, cube cuddle, you know, whatever you want to call it, kubelet, cube ADM without specifying the version, it's going to pull the latest. And the latest is 1.22. Um, if you pull it before 1.21, you're not going to get this message. Um, and that message is because it tries to create a pod security policy um, and it actually does a little kind of sidestep to still create it. So it's still creating it. Um, but just a heads up, if, if uh, you're taking a CKA after 1.25, um, yeah. So now we're going to run some Git pods. We're going to run it against all namespaces. And this is what you want to see. Um, these two core DNSs right here, when we looked up here and the control was saying not ready, these two core DNS pods were sitting at zero one, which means that they were not running. Okay. Um, when it's there, the core DNS uh, is not actually doing anything that it needs to do. There's no natting happening. Um, and so there's no functionality for the pods to actually communicate. That's what Flannel does. You know, Calico, uh, Weave works, you know, all the different CNIs are utilized to create that additional networking layer. Um, and the final part here, this is, this is your, um, command to know and love, uh, run nginx, everybody loves nginx, image equals nginx, and it's going to create a pod, and then we're going to watch that pod. If that pod goes to running, you're done. That's your test. That's your litmus paper test to say, did I get everything correct, and am I done? Um, because at that point, you know that the internal networking is working, you know that everything's communicating, your, your cluster is ready to go in terms of the CKA and everything else. Um, and so now we do see that the Nginx pod is now running. Um, I'll uh, break that. And yeah, so this kind of gives you an understanding of all the different parts that have to fit in place for everything to work properly. And that's why, you know, David said it last week, I'll say it this week, practice is your best friend in doing this. So yeah, awesome. That actually worked. I'm moderately surprised. So um, if I'm, I'm trying to think of anywhere else that it could, that it could break, but uh, that was actually pretty clean. I will just say I was not at all surprised. I had complete faith and total faith in you, Nathan. So. <laughs> I appreciate that. You, you lived up um, to my expectations. You didn't let me down at all. <laughs> so, so a couple of things that, you know, I'll just reiterate, um, you know, when you do the cube and cube ADM init, you know, specify a pod network cider that works with your CNI. Um, and it, it isn't always 10.244.00 slash 16. This is specifically for flannel and it may be specifically for other CNIs. So check your pod cider. Um, the other thing I will say is the second time I took uh, the CKA, it had a uh, config file for a cube ADM and it had a, um, and it had a CNI for me to run with. I have no, no problems talking directly about the exam because it's changed. I don't know if it will have it, but this is just a heads up. Um, so that 
what I'm trying to get to is where kubeadm init is one command. kubeadm has a bunch of different things. Um, and so if they're saying, hey, use kubeadm and we want you to run this config file, you're like, oh, wait a second, how do I do this? You know, you can look like, oh, well, there's kubeadm config, you know, and then you can say, okay, well, what does, what does it do? You know, print flags. Okay, well, let's see what else I can do here. Um, and then just, you can kind of like go through different things here in order to verify what you can do. If you already know what to do, great, move on. If you don't know what to do, use this resource. Don't just stop and say, I can't do it because they've basically given you a place to start with every question, even if you're starting from scratch. And with me, that kubeadm config, I didn't know what to do. So I actually looked through here to find it. And I did also did a kubeadm uh, dash H um, for different ones of these in order to get a little bit more perspective. And so that helped me move through it. But anyway, um, just to wrap up a couple of things here, um, just for some future references, I, I can't do a talk without talking about automation and vRealize automation. It's just in my blood. Um, if you are a VRA person and you want to automate it from scratch, there are a bunch of resources on how to do that. Um, and these are all utilizing kubeadm and utilizing open source solutions in order to basically get it set up. I've got my own little blueprint here uh, as well, it has a, a GitLab, and they all require you know, an Ubuntu image uh, with Cloud Init enabled and VRA 8.0 or 8. whatever. So all those different things there. Uh, but what do you do with the cluster? Okay, I've, I've built a cluster, now what do I do? Explore is my biggest thing. Um, if I go in here now, so I can go to Etsy Kubernetes now, and all of those manifests are there. Like I can cat my admin.conf and see, okay, what is actually Oh, thanks. Thanks for that. I can sudo cat my admin.conf and I can see all the crazy things here, right? But I can see some pieces of information that helps me kind of create an idea of what this is. This is a config, this is a context, right? Um, and, you know, as you move in with multiple different configure, multiple different clusters, you're going to have multiple different parts of this particular file because they'll have multiple clusters and all sorts of stuff here, right? Um, and then, you know, looking into uh, PKI um, and knowing which is the CA cert, which is the CA key, that's a big deal. Um, and, you know, knowing if I uh, back up here and then uh, uh, sudo cat controller, you know, okay, okay, that was a little bit too much. <laughs> What, did I do the right thing? Looks like I just pulled up the exact same config. I said controller manager, but you know, looking at these, you know, and verifying what they're actually doing um, is extremely helpful in the exam because you'll have things that are broken, and you'll run uh, your commandlets in order to track what's broken. Um, and then if you already know what right looks like, then you can kind of work backwards uh, and try to fix things. One of the errors that I had was actually a port that was wrong. Um, and I changed and or another something else was running on that port. And so I actually changed the port to a cluster to a port that it's not supposed to be on. And I changed all the other configurations to that port. So I basically moved an entire uh, Kubernetes cluster um, to a different port. And then everything just came back up and started working <laughs> again. So that kind of can tell you all the different things that are a little bit crazy about this. But anyway, knowing all of these things here is extremely useful. So explore, number one, Etsy Kubernetes, or two. Play around with runtime. So I just use Docker and Flannel, mix it up. Try Containerd and Weave or Cryo and Calico. Try different things, you know, find out what works best for you. Uh, because I, they didn't make a specific, this is the um, runtime that you have to use. So find the one that is easiest for you to, to work with. Build some stuff. I mean, why not, right? <laughs> you've, you've, you've got the ability now to you know, use a third party like Helm to deploy some, some deployments. Um, get used to using kube cuddle or kube control, 
or kubectl. Figure out which way you want to say it. Um, it will help you move from one thing to the next. You know how you understand each different commandlet will help you grow into the different areas. So like when you're running, you know, your, your get pods and your get nodes, those are the, that's your meat and potatoes, right? And you move into describe, you move into um, logs, you move into um, your, your alls and all the different commandlets that you can run in order to just walk around your clusters. It's, a, it's an amazing experience once you kind of know your way around. After you pass your CKA, put pie hole on. If you have a Raspberry Pi, run pie hole. Nobody likes ads. Um, and you can do it on a Kubernetes cluster if you want to. It's a fun little uh, project to play around with. All right, so let's talk about the tips. <clears throat> um, so the keep calm and carry on is because this is a practical exam. If you do mess something up, you do have to fix it. Um, and this is the biggest part of the deployment of a cluster. Um, so understanding and practicing how it goes, how to do it from start to finish is extremely critical. It's an open book exam. So really the CKA is more about managing your time and how you actually know how to uh, move around the open book than it is about the stuff that you know, right? Uh, I don't know anybody that knows how to build a cluster from start to finish. I don't know anybody that knows how to build pod security policies and all those other things. Um, well, even pod scalar policies are being redacted, but um, how to run configurations um, for service accounts, for roles, for cluster roles, just off, off a whim. If you are that person, and, you know, more power to you. Uh, but I'm one of those people that have to look it up almost every time, right? And I don't feel bad about that because it takes me like five seconds. I know exactly where it is, right? So how do you want to answer that question? Um, I put in here a command that basically I ran that every time they asked me to create a manifest, I ran cube cuddle run nginx dash dash image equals nginx dash dash dry dash run equal client dash o yaml. Uh, squeak, I don't remember if that's less than or great then, but nginx dot yaml. And that just creates an Nginx YAML manifest that I can manage and uh, configure to actually fit what they're asking me to do. Yeah, and I'll, I'll say it again, practice, practice, practice. You know, I think what David showed with the Etsy backup, etcd backup and restore was actually great. I don't know how many times I did that, <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that's one of those things that you know, muscle memory is, uh, is extremely helpful. I put in a link for Mumshun Mambas uh, Udemy course. David talked about it last week. I'm going to talk about it this week. I will tell you without a shadow of a doubt, that man got me past the CKA. Uh, and it is his course is worth every penny. You get access to the code cloud environment where you can do a ton of labs. Uh, and it is extremely, extremely useful. The only thing that I would say uh, is that this was the one area that code cloud didn't really help too much. It may have, he may have updated it, but uh, this was the one area where I, I did a lot of work myself in terms of building the cluster. Um, so, you know, you can definitely use this as a um, addition to his stuff. His stuff is very focused in the environment manifests and management. Uh, journal CTL dash U space cubelet. If something's not working, that's your start. And that's, I mean, <laughs> just just remember that commandlet. It's the same up there with uh, the cube control up top. And then finally, check your work. I mean, it's a practical exam. You're given every opportunity to verify that everything is working the way that it should be. So why not do it? You know, make sure that when you do the work, uh, you're being time conscious. Um, and then one that I didn't put down here, but now that we're talking about the time, being time conscious. Skip the questions that you have no clue. Like when you're going through the exam and they ask something about uh, something that you just don't, don't even know where to start, just skip it. Go to, the, go to the next one. If that one gives you a poser, skip that one. And then just think of it in layers. Think about the ones that you absolutely have down and answer those questions right off. Go back to the ones that you didn't answer and then go through until you find the one that you have the best bet at 
moving into those answers and do those. And then finally, the ones you have no clue, that's where the open book comes in extremely handy. The cheat sheet comes in extremely handy and find out where to start and then work your way through the, through the question. And yeah, if you run out of time, uh, then that's, in my opinion, that's the best way to end an exam. Because every time I ended an exam with time on the table, I felt like, you know, what if there's something that I'm missing? And yeah, so that's the last thing I'll say there. And I'll, that's all I have. I really appreciate it coming on. And I really hope this was helpful. That was great. Thanks very much, Nathan. I'm going to give folks one last uh, chance to get in their questions. But other than that, I think we're about ready to wrap it up. Um, Nathan, can people bug you if they have further questions? Like on Twitter? Oh, yeah. Like yeah, absolutely. So I'm at uh, V Nathan Bennett. Definitely reach out to me if you have any questions, especially towards the exam. Um, you know, we'll we'll definitely get this uh, slide deck out there with the resources, um, if nothing else for the resources so that y'all y'all have that. Um, and yeah, absolutely reach out to me if you have any questions, especially towards the CKA. Um, yeah, love to help out as much as I can. Awesome. Well, I'm not seeing any more questions come in, so uh, we will call it a night. Thanks very much.